blueberries can nourish nearly 300 types of caterpillars, not to mention all the birds that eat those caterpillars. And in a month or two, the blueberries that my family is going to enjoy. My family really loves wildlife, so we're doing what we can to make our backyard a better habitat. And you can too. My name is Liz Wagner, and I'm an environmental educator with the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. In today's video, we're going to be talking to you about how you can green your backyard and be a habitat hero. A few changes can make a big difference for the survival of bugs and all the birds that need them, along with lots of other types of wildlife too. So join me for this short video to learn how you can make wildlife habitat at home. Whether you have a lawn or a windowsill, you can add a little more habitat for your wild neighbors, from butterflies to birds. This video will give you a few ideas on why and how to get started, and at the end, I'll share some resources if you want to dig deeper. But first, why does this even matter in the first place? On a sunny day, you may see lots of bees buzzing around, but they really need our help now more than ever. The number of insects and the birds who need them is declining all over the world due to loss of habitat, pesticide use, and climate change. But each of us can make a difference that helps them to survive and thrive. One of my goals in this video is to show you that if you're a fan of the birds, you need to be a fan of the insects too. Why do millions of birds migrate into North America to raise their young each spring? It's the bugs, baby. You may not think that insects have much to do with your life either, but E.O. Wilson, one of the great biologists of our time, calls them the little things that rule the world. Why is that? Well, first of all, there are far more insects than any other kind of life on land. If my hands were a heavy duty scale and I could weigh all the little insects on land on one arm and all the other land animals of all sizes, big and small, on the other, which side do you think would weigh more? the insects by far. With so many insects, if you think maybe they're car really carrying their weight when it comes to taking care of nature, you'd be completely right. They're responsible for a lot of activity, and I don't mean being bugaboos and flying around in my face. I'm talking about insects doing things that help you every day and are essential to the survival of life on Earth. You might say all the insects are tiny superheroes. They pollinate flowers that lead to two out of every three foods in the produce aisle at the supermarket. They consume plants and then help form an essential base of the food web full of protein that nourishes everything else from New York State's bluebirds to bears, and they are natural recyclers of plants and animals too. And hey, they help make the world beautiful. What would spring and summer be without all the flowers they help to pollinate? allowing seeds to form that grow future generations of flowers and fruit that I like to eat. So despite being small, insects truly are the little things that rule the world, and you can protect them, and at the same time, you'll protect the incredible number of birds that rely on them to survive and raise their young. So, you want to be a habitat hero? What can you do? How can you make a home for these animals in your own backyard? Let's get into it. You can help make the healthy habitat that local wildlife need to thrive. So when you think about making changes in your yard, think about the parts of habitat. Food, water, shelter, and space to raise young are the four key parts of animal habitat. Let's explore what this may look like at home. A caterpillar has to eat a lot of lunch to bulk up before it makes a chrysalis to transform into an adult butterfly. And our local birds are the same way. A nest of chickadees needs six to 10,000 caterpillars to grow up strong. So, what's for lunch in your backyard? Our yards can provide food for insects throughout their life cycles and the birds who need them. You can't be a friend to birds without also being a friend to the bugs. They are inseparable in nature. Remember that blueberry I was looking at? Hopefully it will get a small number of nibbles from some caterpillars on its leaves. And that means I'll have more butterflies to pollinate its flowers and to make fruit. And our native insects tend not to get really overpopulated and consume everything. They're just a healthy part of a healthy ecosystem. So wouldn't you love to see a butterfly chrysalis appear in your own backyard? 
I certainly will this summer, and I'm looking forward to it. Now my blueberries are going to be blooming in June and fruiting in August. So if I want to have blooms all summer and into the fall, I want a variety of plants in addition to my blueberry. You can ask at your local plant nursery, but an ongoing bloom through the seasons is the way to go for bugs as well as beauty. My yard has bee balm, purple comb flower, sunflowers, native milkweeds, and for the fall, I have New England asters and showy goldenrods. All these flowers are a lot of fun. Flowers are amazing on their own. But when I know I'm planting something that's also feeding a big collection of local animals of all sizes, I am making homes for bugs and all the beautiful New York State birds who consume them. Now, if you have a tiny yard and you don't want to convert it all to garden, can you just take a piece of your yard and let it go wild? I have to admit, a mowed lawn is one of the least beneficial environments for wildlife, but we all need a place to run around, and that's fine. So just make an edge or a small patch of yard a little bit more diverse, or let it be wild, and that will help a lot. And if all you have is a window, that's okay too. You can plant flowers that will attract butterflies and moths in a flower box. Flower boxes tend to be drier, so choose species like a flowering sage or a bee balm that are okay with a drier location. You may get to watch hummingbirds, bees, and butterflies visiting your window during the summer. All right, so let's move on to the next part of habitat, water. All animals need water, and water in your backyard can take many forms. If you have a natural pond or a stream near you, you're all set. But you can also make a human-made pool of water or a bird bath that you refresh regularly so it doesn't grow mosquito larvae. Pools can be really tiny too. Butterflies will use a small muddy spot in a garden that allows for puddling of water. All right, let's move on to shelter. Shelter can be as simple as leaving a little debris pile in the corner of your yard or hanging some string segments that birds can use for nesting from a tree branch. But it can also be something beautiful to observe too. One of the favorite things for me in my backyard is this little bee house. My kids and I can check it daily to see if new bees have moved in or moved out. This is not a home for the European honeybee, but is for our native bees. European honeybees are actually unusual for bees with their colony led by a queen bee. Most pollinating bees in the United States are called solitary bees and live their lives without a beehive as individuals. They need a spot to lay eggs though, and that's where this bee house comes in. If you look and see the little patches of mud in the tubes, Inside of each of those, there may be a young bee in its larval stage, transforming into an adult. Soon on a sunny day, it may emerge and fly away to some of the flowers in my yard. One of the common yard plants people often have around their houses, a yew, that's Y-E-W, can be a great area for bird nests. I have a friend with a large yew that has hosted baby morning doves and robins this year. There's just one essential point. Your yard will only be a healthy home for nestlings if you don't put pesticides on your lawn. These chemicals kill off the worms and the insects that baby birds and their parents need to eat. If your yard's maintained naturally without chemicals, you're providing a healthy habitat. Another simple way to provide shelter is that many animals need dirt available to create areas for their young to grow, including small children. <laughs> So you don't need to mulch your yard everywhere. Leave a little exposed dirt, and even that will help wildlife. So if you've watched this video, I'm sure you are all a lot like my family. You love animals, and you want to be a habitat helper. If everyone with some lawn or even a little space in New York did this, think about the thousands of acres we could transform into healthy habitat. Another friend of wildlife, Doug Ptolemy, calls this creating a homemade national park. You can help make it happen. At the end of this video, we're sharing some links so you can learn about native plants and even how to make your yard a certified garden for wildlife. You can always start small with a plant that pollinators love or a wild patch of yard, but if you get hooked on habitat, you'll have a chorus of birds, bees, and flowers growing up soon. Hope you enjoyed this adventure at home and they'll have a great time greening your backyard this summer. Before you know it, you'll have some new wild neighbors from the tiny bugs to the big beautiful birds. We look forward to seeing you 
recreating locally and safely this summer. So remember to enjoy New York State and thank you for making it a greener place to live.